are listening to 90.7 WCLH, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, and Hazleton, the home of Metal Mondays. And that right there was some metal from Threat Point. They're from Scranton, PA. Comes off of their latest release, Rest in Peace, and that was the title track to their release. And right now I am joined in the studio with CJ, Alex, and Matt of Threat Point. How are you guys doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. good. Doing well. Thank you. Always doing good on... Metal Monday. So let's first talk about this release. How has pe- how have people been uh, reacting to it since it's that new? Is it October twenty eighth when it came out? October twenty eighth, yeah. Uh, it's like old news to us because we recorded it a year ago. Oh really? And um, we we had some guys come and go in the band and stuff like that, but definitely like with the four of us in the band now. Uh, I think it's like this truthfully the strongest chemistry that we've ever had and I mean what you've heard like the thrash kind of stuff like it that seems to be where it's going you know I, th- I think writing wise like it's just as strong as it's been I'm sure you know these guys would agree uh, basically she was asking the, the feedback we've been getting yeah. actually honestly the feedback that we've been getting uh, is actually pretty good uh, a couple people actually uh, did already go to the Gallery of Sound. It's available at the Gallery of Sound, by the way, um, to pick up the album. And we've already gotten several several messages. People are really blown away by it. Great. So, so how um, old is this current lineup that you have right now? Because oh, um, you had three steady <coughs> members and someone new. Yeah. Newer. He's the new newest guy. Yeah. N- new newest by uh, probably since. About 15 months new. Yeah. August, yeah. yeah I, August I got in the band uh, last August. So, yeah. what's it, 2016? 2015 yeah. I got in the band. <laughs> uh, and we did have another guitar player, uh, but he decided to uh, leave the band. So, I'd say since that last like August. April, I think. Yeah, so, piece. I mean, I'd say that it's been this lineup, if you just want to minus it. I mean, since last August, yeah. we've had us four. And this is pretty much the way it's going to be now because it's what the so four of us have is pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. So since you're the last member to join and you said you wrote this like over a year ago, did you have a big part in the writing of this? Uh, actually, uh, yeah. Um, I, didn't, I didn't have a huge part in the writing. They, I mean, they, they had all the parts already in stone. Mm-hmm. But actually the song you just heard, Rip, uh, we were – I was actually – we had rehearsal. I think it was a Saturday afternoon and Chris – said to me, he's like, Matt, you know, uh, I really want you to help, like, I really want a song to be written with all four of us, with you just included in the whole writing process. And, uh, you know, I, I wrote the verse riff uh, for Rip, and uh, like like right there on the spot. And uh, two days later, Rip was born. So, I mean, uh, but yeah, and in and, and all the songs, I put all my own bass lines in. I wrote a bridge or a chorus here and there, but Pretty much everything was already, I'd say pretty much everything was already kind of, the ideas were already laid out. I just kind of threw my ideas Put, put the seasoning on. There you go. Say. There you go. And since you actually named the record Rip, well, rest in peace, uh, was this a, was a big factor in naming this partially because all four of you wrote on it, on this song? Or is it just, uh, was it your favorite song off the, off the record? Favorite Both, song, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about your release party that will be happening on November eighteenth. You said, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a doozy. Um, we're playing with it'll be us, uh, Beyond Fallen. If you know who they are, I think you play them. They're on, on the here, yeah. yeah. Killer band, um, Silhouette Lies. They're like another hard rock band from Strand. It's like their second last show. Um, they're they've been around for six years, so sad to see them go out. But great band and. A female fronted band from like the Binghamton area, Drama Stream, and they're all killer bands. Uh, we're gonna have raffles, and we're gonna give away like a guitar and a snare drum and like a Threat Point merch package, you know, and uh, just really try to get some incentives to get some people there. I mean, the last uh, <clears throat> you play some of our stuff off Care for What You Wish For. The last CD release show we had was uh, at the Bar on Oak in Pittston, and that was a that was a good one too, you know. So. We're hoping to make this one better. I say, uh, I hope they shut the place down for fire code violation. Yeah. There's so many people, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, it should be a good time, you know. It'll be, it'll be definitely be a hell of a show. Yeah. 
And where is it at again? The V spot in Scranton. So. Okay. Have you ever played there before? Many times. Good, good crew there, uh, and it's just a great place if you've never been there. So, it should, it uh, should be a throwdown. I don't know if you guys have anything to add about that, but great place, good beer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good, Vinny's, good food. Vinny's it's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. PBR on draft. And there's a nice rock. Yeah, not so. <laughs> PBR. No, those those days are over for me. PBR. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's a, it's a great 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 bar, great crowd, um, and it's always. I don't know. I'd say the vibe there is awesome. It's, it's definitely the best, you know, I hope I don't get no flack, but I think it's definitely the best place to play yeah. around here. Yeah. So that's just my opinion. Vinny's, Vinny's a great guy. He really takes care of bands, nice. and he takes care of, you know, his clientele. So. Nice. I'm sure it'll be better once you guys are there playing at that, when you're playing there. So <laughs> it'll be the release party of this new record. Uh, let's play something off of it so people get a, could get a feel Actually, though, first, when you uh, have a show like you're going to, how much new material do you play like from this record since it's the release Quite party? Quite a bit. I think we have seven or eight new ones we're going to play. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We're, it's just uh, you can never make everyone happy. You know what I mean? You're trying to sell the new stuff, so but you got to play the old stuff. It's like that's, yeah. you know, I can only imagine if your band has like seven albums out. Like what do you... You know, um, yeah, we're playing a lot of songs from it though. Um, so we we've been we've been playing the new ones out for a while, a few months now. Diligently going over even yeah. the newer ones. We're actually doing a couple new covers that we haven't done. Nice. I mean, just trying to really give people a, a fresh show. You know, when you guys go to see a band, do you appreciate when they play new material, or are you there for the classics? As an artist, I understand they have to play new material, but I mean, th those old songs are what hooked you into the band, you know? Yeah. So, I, you know, I get the whole deal. We are joined by vocalist Chris now. Chris, how are you doing? An hour to get from Dunmore to here. Nice. Okay. <laughs> it's not rock and roll to show. Do you really want to know how I feel? <laughs> it's, it's just an icebreaker question that I ask everyone. I'm kind of tired of asking it, but. Normally, that's the only thing I could start with. I hear you. Yeah. So, can you guys pick a track for me to play right now off of the latest release? Oh, Maybe your request. I got too many songs. Bury the Wicked. Bury the Wicked. Yeah. Track six. Here's Threat Point with Bury the Wicked. Keep it locked right here on 90.7 WCLH. You are tuned in to 90.7 WCLH, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, and Hazleton, the home of Metal Mondays. That was Threat Point with Bury the Wicked. It comes off of their latest release, Rest in Peace. And with me in the studio still is Threat Point, CJ, Chris, Alex, and Matt. Uh, CJ, you came in a little bit late, and I was told you know all the answers to the lyrics. Maybe you're the primary lyricist. Can you tell us a little bit about the track we just heard, Bury the Wicked? That song's about getting rid of anything in your life that drags you down in a nutshell. Whether it be drugs, women, guys, jobs, I don't care what it is. You know, just get rid of it. Bury. Bury. Nice. And uh, so, listening to the record, we'll talk about this, the vocals on it, I noticed a lot of different vocal stylings in it. Uh, is it all your vocals? Like, when you sing, like, maybe the higher pitched and then more of the grittier stuff i don't like using the term like cookie monster but kind of like <laughs> yeah like, yeah like uh you know because you guys are testament fans like when chuck billy went more with that voice on some records so do you switch between them a lot yes i actually i said this record so i'm gonna try some death metal vocals okay. like the demonic era with testament yeah. you know and i think wow well, let's let's try something new some you know we always try to stretch ourselves and try new things so uh, one of the new songs, Writing on the Wall, is pretty much, it is like the heaviest vocal I've ever done, yeah. you know? I'm and the Chuck. The only, the only thing, other vocals on the, on the, the CD are Alex does some backups and stuff. The really, really low guttural, like, uh, that's everything else is me. I do the highs, the thids, and the, the lows. Good. So. That's what, good to hear. Because, yeah, it was interesting because it's both of you. I, I'm not really sure how a lot of artists do it. 
but it reminded me of like Double and Death Patrol. You got <coughs> Zetro and then Billy, and they complement with each other. But it's also cool that you know you're just doing both of them within it, and you you I assume you do it with tracks. So in the live performance, is it difficult for you to to take this to a live performance if you're doing different ones, or is it e an easy transition? No, I mean I'm. I'm used to it, I guess. I just, we, we write for the live. Mm -hmm. So anything I do in the studio, we pull off live. I could switch back from, you know, the, the death vocal to the cleaner vocal, yeah. you know. So the only thing, sometimes we, we, if we overlay vocals, Alex will, he'll pull off like a secondary. Because if I'm laying on top of it or I come in late, he'll do that line, the underlying thing, yeah. because it's just a timing thing. Other than that, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah like what he said, we're old school, you know, we write for live, like, we're, we're of the belief if you can't replicate it live, then it has no business being on a CD. Yep. You know, but, you know, everybody's different, you know? Yeah. And speaking of hearing it live, everyone out there listening, you could hear this live on November 18th. If you go to the V-Spot in Scranton, they will be performing a lot from the new record, and it's their <laughs> CD release party. Uh, can you, you kind of touched on this before, but now that you're all here, uh, I'll ask again, like, what could fans expect if they go to this show? What kind of performance, if you're like me and have never seen you before? <laughs> Vin Vinny always says when we come, things get broken there. It gets rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess rowdiness. They're a little rambunctious, those we have people. A, we have a couple a couple new covers we're pulling out. Um, not going to mention what they are, but okay. there are a few surprises. We take covers and we put our little spin on them. You know, like any band does today, Disturbed, you know, whoever, <laughs> Five Finger, they, they put a spin on it yeah. and make it their own. So we do we do a couple covers. You know, we're far from a cover band, never will be a yeah. cover band. No. That's why we don't have any money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And that's the thing, too. We do covers our way because, like, I don't think we're capable of doing them the original way. No. It'll, it'll be, like, the simplest yeah. song, and it's easier to play, you know, to shred your own stuff than it is to play, like, the Ramones. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense at all, but it's true. We tried Journey the other night, and it was an, it was a total epic <laughs> fail. It's yeah. like some songs should just be left alone. And that's what you don't hear, folks. Yeah. yeah. That's why we don't play them out. We know? tried a Striper song, and I, I started the vocal, and Alex just, he looked at me and burst out laughing. I said, okay, I'll take that as a, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Not getting anywhere at the Christian metal? No, the vocal. Oh, yeah, it's just vocal, Michael yeah. Sweet. He's yeah. just, he's one of the best. Yeah, and speaking of making covers your own, that's cool how you say that. My dad's always on my case about some bands, like some covers that I like, and he says, well, those covers aren't good because, you know, they play them exactly like the artist. And we were talking, docking during the break, one of my favorite bands, and he mentions them like uh, songs that they've, they've covered from maybe Emerson, Lake, and Palmer and such, uh, he, according to him, they don't make them their own, but I think some singers, when they sing, be it a Don Dokken or a Dave Mustaine, I think once they sing it, it kind of becomes their own in a way because they just have such a unique voice. But specifically, he, he's mentioned Megadeth, their cover of Paranoid by Sabbath. I mean, I like it. I totally dig it. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So he'll, he's probably going to be mad at me if he's listening right now. <laughs> well, but, don't uh, be mad. Yeah. It's like, like Devil Driver. When they do covers, they did Wasted Years. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and they did they, they did Holier Than Thou, and they smoked Metallica on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just want to wind him up. They did uh, <laughs> they did a cover of a Sale, if you've ever heard that song. Uh, I forget who it's by. It's a pop song, but they, they, they covered it, and it was like they made it theirs. It's, I think it's like genius. Even Testament's Dark Roots, they did uh, Power Slave by Man. They did uh, The Scorpions, yeah. you know, and they did Queen. I mean, it, but it's still, it's Testament doing a cover, yeah. but it doesn't sound like the originals. Yeah. And that's what we do. We just really twist them up. Nice. So, uh, guys, a few listeners out there, if you want to know their covers, you better go get to that show. Okay, let's speak about the music scene in Scranton. How is the music scene? Uh, crickets. Um, <laughs> no, uh, well, what really hurts uh, this area uh, is there is no all ages venues. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, this style of music, I mean, if I could just, okay, I'm just gonna be completely upfront. Uh, there's really no, all right, here we go. I'm gonna get a lot of flex. Sorry, guys. There's no market for Thanks, our man. music around here. Yeah. Um, that's why we tour constantly. Um, 
you know, places like the the V Spot, you know, has a bar crowd, and we always do well there. Mm-hmm. But unless you're a cover band, you can't play at the casino, oh, or, or you can't play at a lot of great places around here because you're not playing. You're it's not like a glass ceiling. Yeah. 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 Um, and with our style of music and what we bring to the table, like we're we're all in your face energy and. Kids go for one reason, you know what I mean? For the for the music, for the show. Adults, not really. They yeah. just go there to have a couple beers, see if they can, you know, bring what's her name home, and if she leaves, they're gonna leave too. Tell her about like Rapid City, South Dakota. Remember that all age venue we just did on tour? That was yeah, great. Here, go ahead. You. Oh, all right. I guess I'm gonna say the. I guess I'm gonna speak on this topic. I guess I'll be the bad we'll guy. I guess I'll, I guess I'll be the bad guy of the band on this subject. Uh, but um. We uh, just did a Midwest tour, and you know it was it it, it, it was a good tour. Uh, but our best show was by far we played in where Rapid City, South, Rapid City, South Dakota, middle of nowhere, middle of <laughs> honestly. I think the population of South Dakota is maybe five hundred. The whole yeah. state. <laughs> Anyways, um, there was probably about twenty kids, twenty third, thirty kids there. But I'll tell you what, every one of them bought merch. They were engaged the whole time it, it was it was a school night go figure and they were still there you know what i mean uh just and we even though there's only you know a couple like 30 40 kids there or however many i, I don't do the you know i don't count yeah. you know they but anyway up the yeah yeah, yeah. They like put, i said they were there yeah they bought a lot of yeah. merch too yeah know? like you leave a show like that on a high like you've actually really accomplished something and uh if I could be totally honest, you know, I'm just going to be honest. Uh, a lot of times you play at bars or you play for adults, and uh, you actually leave very disheartened because they leave the show, they they'll come for one band and leave. Yeah. It's such a slap in the face yeah. with a band like be. us that works so hard. Like we're we're out every weekend almost. We toured. This is we did. Uh, we toured the country. I think three times already. So, like, we're actually real, like, we really, really push. And, you know, and the thing is, like, not everybody likes this kind of music. I totally understand that. You know what I mean? But it's extreme. You know, like he says, Chris always says it's it's a niche. Metal is a niche. Yeah. You know, it's the truth. You either love it or you don't. Like, like I've heard Rob Zombie say, you know, no, and it's so true. Nobody ever said, I was in a Slayer one summer. Like, who yeah. says that? You yeah. carve it into your arm and you wear it, you know? Like, it's um, so true, and same thing with this. But having said that, the, some of the people who do take to us are some of the greatest. Yeah. Like, the other day, uh, just a couple weeks ago, we, we got a letter from Russia. We got an email from Russia, and the guy, all he asked for was, like, could you guys give me a picture, a signed picture, and send it to me? And he's like, I love that song, One in the Chamber, One in the Chest. It's off the new album. And I was like, I mean, it really humbles you, because you put music out there, and it supposedly goes everywhere, but you don't know who gets it. You know, and it's just like that. Stops but with, in your tracks. But with that being said, I mean, I'm not just going to knock this area. A lot of it, I it's I'd hate, all over. It's, it's all the same. I mean, it's all the went, same. Went to we Seattle, went to Seattle, all the way out and all the way back. We mm-hmm. played on the way out and back, and it's 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 bad for. There's touring bands, there's four or five bands a night, and people come for one band, like Matt said, and then the other three, four bands that yeah. might have traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles, they don't even get that opportunity. Because people aren't like, we, like when you went to see Megadeth, you saw Nuclear Assault, you saw Sabbath. You stuck around for the whole gamut back yeah. in the day. Now we'll just go and oh, well, I'll run home with an excuse. I got to wash the cat. The car's got to go to the shop. Whatever. The wife fill is my crying. ice cube tray. Yeah, I got to fill my ice cube tray. <laughs> but, you know, and, that's, and, that, and that hurts. It's hard when you're touring. You're, you're two, 3,000 miles away from home some nights. And it's, it, may, it leads for a bitter ride that night. Yeah, but... You know, but I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm not knocking the area. Like yeah. I said, the fans we do have around here are the most loyal fans where, you know, I'm not knocking anything. I'm, I'm just saying this is a very cover band dominant area. And, and, and what hurts is there's nowhere for kids to go. Yeah. So for music like us, it's it's hard for us to play for people that like our kind of music, I guess. There's some great bands around here. You got a band like Beyond Fallen that's on our on our city release. Yeah. Those guys will tear it up. They destroy it. They're they great. should be on pro stages. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, they play it all over, you know, but they you know, they know too how it is. And you got Silhouette Lies and there's there's some really great original bands around here. And you know, it's like Matt said, it's very tough. Very yeah. tough. And some some of the 
greatest venues that were around here that allowed original metal have closed down. Yeah. And nothing new is opening. So Yeah, you know what too, and I don't wanna but you guys talked about like all ages. We're playing a, a another show uh with our friends in a, a new band called Traverse the Abyss. We're doing their C D release show like the Saturday after Thanksgiving, November twenty sixth, up at a place called Lyrics in Carbondale. And I just read today, Lyrics is closing that's in February. There you go. Yeah. Wow. And that's an all ages place and mm -hmm. that's that's that. You know, so but uh I mean, we all miss Diane's Diane's Deli in Pittston. Was yep. they were like the home of hosting metal, yep. original metal. The they Rattler, were, the Rattler. I mean, there, were, there were some great venues that are are gone now. What's what's the one all ages one right here? Uh, it's right there. Cafe Metro. They had and no, oh, the other side. The, yeah. the, the, the other, other side. side. <laughs> I think that's really the only place. Yeah, yeah. that's here. really small there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't mean to be the Debbie Downer, mm -hmm. but well, that's pretty truth, much man. the. Uh, that's everything. You I gotta mentioned. be in this to. Uh, you gotta do play original, especially metal. To, you gotta love it, cause. Man, the 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 bad sometimes outweighs the good, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, most I did say most of the time. But yeah. you gotta you gotta, you gotta love fun. what you do. You it's, know, it's fun without without playing bass or without playing with these guys. It would it just part of me would be missing. And yeah. I'm sure all these guys feel the same. Totally, yeah. You yeah. know, whether you, if you get one fan at a show, it really makes it worth it. So, one by one. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and listening to other radio shows like throughout the country, and they have artists from around the country, and they seem to express the same thing mm -hmm. uh, that you know people are just interested in the cover bands really hard for basically just saying what you said uh, yep. for people to accept new music and. For them to even open for a national act, they only want cover bands. And yeah. So um, let's talk about, so the music scene. Uh, a while ago, when I first started radio, I interviewed a punk rock band, and a lot of things that I asked uh, kind of went over their head. I like to ask kind of like the questions that they asked at the end of that metal show, which recently got canceled. Uh, but before Ooh. that... Um, nice. I didn't know that. Yeah, that yeah, that, that got, that got uh, a couple months ago it got canceled. Terrible. But they really focused on more like national acts, but right. do you do you if you guys have seen it? Do you think they did a lot for maybe local bands as well, or just maybe keeping the music scene alive? Opening for national bands? Well, no, like that metal show. You know how they oh. just they just had national bands on the show. Right. They didn't do much for local metal, but in a sense, I would say it was just keeping the genre alive. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, as a metal fan, I'd love to watch that show. I've yeah. seen it. Um, it's cool. I mean, they, they'll ask you trivia and stuff like that. Um, it's like when Headbangers Ball died. Yeah. yeah. It's like everything metal comes and it's just they, they crush it. Yeah. yeah. They extinguish it. Not in a good way. But we'll 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 just keep pounding the pop in the country down your throat. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. It just it just has a very bad rap. I mean, you know, you tell always people, has. Yeah, you tell people, yeah, like, like I don't even tell people we're really metal. I just say hard, rock, hard rock <laughs> yeah. because like, when people hear like you're in a metal band, like they think you, they imagine you're screaming in a garbage can. Like, <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> you know, I'm sure you tell people you're a metalhead, and you're like, uh, they look at you. Or, or when you yeah. ask somebody, do you listen to metal? And they say, yeah, Bon Jovi. Yeah, well, <laughs> when I came to WCLH, when they like thought, well, heard that I like metal, they were thinking like new metal bands, like. I don't know, asking Alexandria. Oh, God, like yeah. So and it's like, like, no, no. Plus, I was I was wearing Megadeth shirts every day, so yeah. I just, some people just don't really understand, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. but, they look um, at you sideways, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because I think when they hear metal, it's it's such a, there's so many genres, you can't even yeah. pick mm -hmm. them out. It's a little overblown, you know, yeah. a little yeah. overboard. Yeah, so the songs I asked the, uh, I asked them about that metal show, they didn't get it, so, and, and their answers to these questions, which I'm kind of taking somewhat from the show. I mean, they're general questions, but it's something to get all of you guys involved and in, sure. like who your influences are, like what shows you've been at. But even their answers just went right over my head because not too big in the punk rock scene. Right. Like more, uh, more Metal. things, yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'll ask all of you to take your turn when I ask, uh, I have three questions. So best show you've ever been to? wants to go first why don't you start Alex because he says so much as you hear him yeah please Jeez. say something <laughs> best show I've ever been to I 
I don't know. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. For me, I maybe because it was so close, Megadeth, Testament, and Exodus at the Cultural Center. I could nice. walk home. I, I Like, for a show like that, I'm used to traveling two hours, and, you know, it's yeah. it was just, I think just for the fact it was so convenient and it was there, you know. But I didn't live in the golden era like this guy did, so I'd, I'd be having stories the like that. The golden era. See how, see yeah. how I get demoted so quickly? <laughs> For me, probably that would be it. I would say. I've seen thousands. Yeah. Literally, I've been lived in the '80s. I've seen, but uh, Testament always rules. Um, Striper's amazing. Rob Zombie blows your mind. God mm-hmm. smacks like up there. I mean, these these are just some of the greats, you know. Priest, Maiden, Overkill. The, overkill. Oh, we just hung out with Bobby them. Blitz. Yeah. At one of our shows in he Jersey, did. you know, he was down there. Too many to too many to list. Yeah. Metal Church, that show that we talked about, that that was a killer show. Yeah. I was blown away. Blown away. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Anyone else? Best show I ever been to was a threat point show. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. No, no. Uh on a honestly, I really I can't put it's it's kinda like saying that's like a question, uh saying like who's your favorite band? I mean you mm-hmm. can't really Put your finger on it. Uh, but one that does stick out to me, and it's not that I'm a huge fan of their music, but their stage show is incredible, is Mushroom Head. Cool. That, like, the way all those guys can just, the way all the stage moves are syncopated, the way they have everything laid out, it's really amazing. Uh, but no, honestly, I mean, that's, that's a really tough question. Did you answer, Alex? Cause um, <laughs> he's still over here pondering. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> I agree with Chris. I think Rob Zombie is killer live. I've seen him a couple of times. And the I miss the Mayhem Fest. Okay. I always had a blast going to those, just yeah. all day metal. Yeah. So since some of you didn't live in the golden age, as you said, <laughs> my next one was a tour maybe you wish you saw, but I guess I'll extend it to a band maybe who's no longer together that you haven't seen that you would have loved to see. The Doors. Anyway, the Doors. Um... I'm a huge Metallica fan. I get stuff for it all the time. Probably the Injustice for All era. Okay. I wish I could. Like, I'm, I love that band so much, but they don't have the fire they used to. I don't care what anyone says. They're yeah. like 60. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish I saw that. <laughs> I'd say mid-90s Pantera. Oh, yeah. Like, far good. beyond Driven Era. So, and then the last one to wrap this up, it's one I'm getting directly from that metal show. It's a song that you wish you wrote. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Maybe they tell these guys this before they get on the air. Probably. Probably, yeah. Should have went over it with Probably Cliff guys. Burton's bass solo is what I wish I wrote. The anesthesia? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four minutes of just, like, wow. <laughs> yeah. You can, just, you, you can just listen to it over and over again, being like, did somebody really do that on a bass guitar? Yeah. You know what I mean? I wish Chris I don't like it, but I think it's awesome. I wish I wrote Happy Birthday. How many times has that been? Yeah, so every, 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 every like day. <laughs> Happy Birthday. Take it outside of the box. I, the I, box. Uh, testament, down for life. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Hammer Maybe. smash bass. <clears throat> Uh, Rain by Trivium. I love that guitar riff. I wish I did wish I wrote that. I actually wish I wrote Hey Jealousy by Jim Blossoms because I'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> Not as rich as him, but happy birthday. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll, we'll wrap this up soon. Do you have a request from your latest release, Rest in Peace, to end out the segment? And you One in the chamber. One what in the he chamber. said. One in the chest. Okay, every, every time we, we play a sh- we have a live show. We we play our new stuff out when we're uh, when we're out of town a lot. And uh, so many people come up to the merch tailor and are like, "What's that chamber song? I love it. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, what album is that on?" So this is pretty much a this is a strong one. So yeah. I'm happy that you asked that question. Nice. Thank you. And could they definitely hear it as part of your set on November 18th? I don't know. Maybe you got to find come out and I find out. So. Once again, I'd like to thank Threat Point for joining me in the studio on Metal Monday. It's uh, talking metal. It's always great to talk metal. Always. And uh, go see them at the, where was it again? B, B- Spot. I always feel like I'm just going to say something dirty instead. Of oh, that well, hey, that, that's the quote, B Spot. Yeah, you found it. 
That's nice. what they say. So go find it. It's over. <laughs> Providence Scranton, Road. PA. Yep. It, and uh, uh, hear all the new tracks off of Fret Point's latest <coughs> release, Rest in Peace. Up next, I'm going to be playing One in the Chamber, One in the Chest. Thank you, Threat Point, for journey joining me. Keep it locked right here on 90.7 WCLH. <laughs> 